this tool here, this is how I turned my cobblestone concrete field into what you see now. The principles of permaculture and mulching are the same no matter what you're trying to grow, whether it be tomatoes or pasture. If you don't have topsoil, nothing grows. The way that you create topsoil is by putting organic matter on the top. So what I do is two or three times a year, I go out and I scythe my pasture and I let it sit. I don't harvest it. I don't let the animals eat it. I just scythe it and I let it lay. I let it rot and it turns into topsoil on the top of those rocks. It took me a year and I had grass. And in the beginning, all I was cutting down was weeds. I wasn't cutting down alfalfa. I wasn't cutting out grass. All I had was a few little teeny tiny weeds. And now this is what it looks like. This is my wet stone in my little uh, wet pouch. It has water inside of it. And I also have a peening kit. I'll try to show you the peening kit later, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started. This is so much better. This is so much better than a weed whacker because it doesn't beat the grass, it just cuts it. There are different sides for different jobs. I got the side that was meant for slightly scrubby alfalfa. Now my pastures have changed since then and I no longer have scrubby alfalfa. I have good thick alfalfa. But when I first started out, I need something that was a little bit more of a brush cutter. Now this is an Asher diamond and it's a 50, well, it's now like a 60 year old blade. It was made 60 years ago. They don't make them anymore. And I got this from, where did I get this from? I think it was the scythe connection. And um, if you've seen that video of the girl in the skirt out there swinging a, a fire, a, a scythe that's on fire, that's who made these. These are Austrian, really Austrian, not like labeled Austrian and made and stamped out in a factory. This blade is handmade specifically for what I'm doing with it. Look at how beautiful that blade is. And it works. It's amazing. I've owned, I owned one off Amazon that cost me $100. This one with the whole kit cost me $350. It was worth it. It's so fast. The problem is I have a lot of rocks in my field. In bare spots, not in my main field, but in bare spots. And when, when you're working around rocks and other things, your swing is not as efficient. So I'm going to look a little bit awkward for a minute while I'm trying to get around these bare spots. Because usually the grass will support your scythe, but if you have a lot of rocks, the grass isn't thick enough to support your scythe. And so the spaces that I've done this in the most no longer have rocks showing through. But it's, it's, it's hardest to scythe in the space that needs it the most. 
And at this point, the goats just can't keep up on the grass. I want to come in and show you what I mean. See those rocks? See how they're half buried, but they're still there? In spaces where the grass is growing really well, they're almost submerged. See that? Whereas in spaces that I haven't scythed as much because the, um, the ground was poor and the vegetation wasn't growing as well, I have to watch for rocks. If in doubt, don't risk your scythe. Take small swings when you're around lots of rocks or around other hard objects. You don't want to break it. You don't want to snag it. You don't want to tear the blade. It is a soft blade. Um, the other thing is you need to get your grass and your alfalfa cut before it goes to seed. <coughs> it, it, it promotes new growth to cut it. And so if your animals can't keep it down fast enough like mine, then they don't like alfalfa all the time. They prefer grass to alfalfa. And so when it starts to come up and starts to, to um, get above your knees, you know it's almost later than it should be. And if, you're, if your alfalfa starts to open up and lay down, it's matured too far. And you don't want it to do that because then you can't cut it. It's all in the waist. Low down. There's no such thing as a bad weed or a bad plant. What the plant is doing is it's telling you what's happening on your property. Certain kinds of plants pop up first because the soil is subpar or it's compacted or it's poisoned by something. And so you understand what's happening in that soil by what weed comes up. Now, once you change the habitat, the weed changes. There on the side of our road, we used to have this really nasty spiny um, aggressive plant. When I mulched it, I didn't water the space, I just mulched it. A new weed came in. Now after I started watering it a little bit because of some trees, all of a sudden that weed went away. We never went and cut it down or tried to eradicate it. We never sprayed it. But when we changed the environment, the weed changed. And that's what's happened in this pasture. You can see that I had some yellow, really spiny, tall, tough weeds up here on the top of the basement. Well, down here in the pasture, we had alfalfa. I didn't do that. That's just that the, the soil up on that edge is different from the soil down in the pasture now. And so it has a different weed growing on it. So I go out and I cut it down and I watch to see what comes up next. And I use it as mulch. As long as you, I mean, <laughs> even if you let it go to seed, as long as you cut it down and you use it as mulch, it doesn't hurt anything. Although I would say that the younger you come out and start to take care of things, the more biomass you create, the more frequently, to a, to a degree, you don't want to come out and cut it every day. You want it to give it a chance to build up. But the um, once it kind of hits its intermediate growth phase, not its baby phase, but kind of its medium phase, and you cut it, you get a huge amount of biomass and it regrows so that you can cut again. Okay, guys. You can see when I was starting to get tired because I was using my arms rather than my torso. But this is an amazing, amazing tool. It's quiet, it's light. I don't have to go recharge it, all I have to do is sharpen it. It just does a fantastic job. So, what else are they gonna tell you? Oh, this is the thing I don't understand. 
it doesn't make any sense to me to go out and spray your property which doesn't feed your property and then go work out at a gym you can see from me doing this I don't do this very often about three times a year but when I do it it goes out and it works different muscles in my body and the rest of farming does the same thing you're you're moving there's no need for a gym notice how she jumps up and runs away when I start the scythe because it's just so loud did you see how awful that was for her yeah these sighs are so loud they disrupt all the wildlife they disrupt your livestock they ruin your hearing don't they just look happy can you see the duckling back there Cute little bugs. See them? No, the little pieces are not for the babies. The babies will eat a lot more than little pieces. So take a big branch. Yeah, just cut off a big branch. There you go. Okay, put it in your basket. Did you tell, we're gonna call him TLC, okay? Did you tell TLC thank you for your clippers yet? You gotta talk to the camera, honey. Thanks a lot, TLC. Of course, they're a little bit restless.